Well, praise God, we pass the time over to Colleen for some questions and answers. <clears throat> Thank you, Pastor. So for questions and answers, if you have questions, you can post it in the chat. You can also unmute yourself to ask the question to Pastor directly. So while waiting for the questions to come in, Pastor, let me start with uh, uh, in Philippians two thirteen. Uh, it says that it for it is God who works in you both to will and to do for His good pleasure. So, Pastor, just as you talk about mm -hmm. works of Jesus, the works and and the cure. So um, here it also uses the 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 energio two times uh, for God to energio in you to to will and to energio for his the do is also energio for his good pleasure. So uh, God supplies the energizing in us yes. so that we are able to energize to do the works of Jesus. Yes. Amen. 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 Interesting is not just the doing, the will also. The willing. Oh. Stir within us the desire to do his works. Mm, amen. Amen. Uh, we also see in Colossians 1 23, uh, mm. to this end I also labor according to his working, which is energio, which energio or works in me mightily. So Paul, indeed, he, as he works, do the works of Jesus, it is through um, God's uh, energizing. Yes. So that leads me to a uh, next part. Um, we see that uh, in uh, X uh, one eight, right? It talks about the power, you know, the dunamis uh, power. Oh yeah, in yes. fact, uh, the one verse twenty nine, uh, mightily. The last verse, the last word is actually dynamo, right? Dyna dynamic. A dunamis from the word dunamis. dunamis. Uh, I labor striving according to his working or energizing, which he works in me mightily. So is the Holy Spirit's. Uh, power seeking to flow forth, the dunamis of the Holy Spirit. So in the in the working, uh, how does the energy go into dunamis? Mm. Or the, or if is is uh is it correct to say that energizing will result in a uh, dunamis? Yes, yes. Uh, energizing is uh. It says it's faith, uh, it's love which energizes faith in Galatians 5 3. So uh, it starts with love and that compassion within us. And love and compassion energizes us in the end to action. And as we act, it is like Acts 1 verse 8 the power of the Holy Spirit actually uh, comes forth. Mm. Mm. So every miracle will involve uh, dunamis. SMS. Yes, correct. Mm. Mm. There's a question coming forth here. Pastor, if God finished his work on the sixth day, what does John 5.17, which is where God works and shows Jesus what to do. When God finished his work on the sixth day, all uh, and every person that is supposed to live on or in the universe, on earth, in any place, is written in the book of life. Their names are recorded before their existence. There is 
the power of God's wisdom. And so <clears throat> God actually has the book of life. Now, in the book of life, when our life is recorded as a predestination end to end, it is a little book by itself that contains all the things that we are to do, even before we even do them. In the book of Psalms 139, Peter, uh, David speaks about the book written about him before he was even formed, before he is in existence. So in the book of life, once your name is recorded, it includes a little book about all that you are to do from beginning to end of the perfect will of God. It includes, of course, every turn and possibility uh, that you will face. And so in the book of life, of course, is recorded the coming of the Lord Jesus, the lamb slain before he even came here, before foundation of the world. And so everything that Jesus is to do on this earth has already been recorded. He says, I've come in the volume of the book that is written of me. And so what happens is, it, like Jesus, in each individual life, we who are born after the sixth day, that book is unsealed as we are born, and we start working through that book. So when it says that God is working, it is God who already has written all that is done, activate that book uh, according to our chronology, and we receive his instructions and his will. That was what happened in our Lord Jesus. Everything that God revealed to him to do was already recorded in the book of the Lamb. A seal archive of what he wants to do and then it's activated. And it is like a computer program with data that's already been done and then you insert it and you um, activate the program and that program starts working, bringing for all the data that it was sealed inside. The next question, you also thought that in all the healings of Jesus and the apostles, they never prayed to God or the law for healing. And that's correct. They just commanded healing in his name. Is it the same pattern we should be following regarding all healings in the name of Jesus? Yes, correct, 100%. Uh, we are to exercise the authority that He has given it to us. And so that's how it works. Amen. Good question. Next one. Hello, Pastor. Can you please remind us what actually happened when Joshua stopped the sun? <clears throat> and when Hezekiah <clears throat> requested for the sun to move backwards 10 degrees. Okay, now when we look at how Joshua stopped the sun and the moon, there are various ways physically we can look at that. That the sun and the moon actually stop in their rotational uh, momentum. Uh, but if that is done, if there's a brake press to momentum, you have what I call momentum still going on and, and there, was a, there will be waves and land mass crushing at a certain point and a lot of disasters. That never happened. So if momentum was not physically stopped, there's another way to stop it. A time lapse. So, uh, there was a stopping of time in the rotational move of the moon and the sun and they were fixed in time while Joshua and the people continued to move in the fixing of the time for the sun and the earth. And that's why there was no momentum uh, displayed during that miracle. And that's our description of all that takes place. Of course, for Hezekiah, time moved back backwards. And uh, it was amazing what the people continue in the time, time lapse. God can cause 
as I mentioned when I talk about time in our teaching, that some all of us can move at different time, and uh, it's like a bottle of time that you're in while the time pass by around you or stops, and that's an amazing thing about time when it's controlled by God. I believe these topics that God gave uh, tie with what God is about to do. And I believe that God is about to do great signs and wonders and works. And it's bringing us to understand them even more and more. The time control, was it localized time control applicable to Joshua and his team or for the whole earth? I believe both have to be working. That means for the earth and the sun, it is a pause in time without momentum. But for the human beings on earth, they still continue to walk in the arrow of time so that they can do all those things and it took according, accordingly nearly 23 hours or so. And somebody calculated that the 23 hours or so in Joshua's time, together with the 10 degrees of uh, Hezekiah, which is about 20, 20 odd minutes, uh, makes it exactly 24 days. And so one extra full day passed by. And so it, uh, for the local people at Joshua, they were still moving in the arrow of time. Uh, but the earth and everything around them, the molecules were suspended in time. Uh, only God could do that, doing both at the same time. Like in Caleb, time runs differently for him in comparison to others. Yes, correct. For Caleb, he never aged a sin, single second or minute from the day when they were supposed to cross over. Forty years later, he was still the same powerful, strong man, even though time has passed by for everybody else. So time uh, is an interesting thing that God can manipulate. When I was transported in November 2013, it was quite fascinating to feel that transportation and there was a distance that we move in less than a split second. And it still fascinates me to know that one frame of reference was removed and I jumped to another frame of reference. How God does all these things are amazing.
Is it okay to say healing should be based on Rema from God all the time? Or Logos at times? Hmm, uh, interesting question. Now, first, we need to relate Rema to Logos. And Logos is like the fullness of Rema. And Rema is a, a part of Logos that is distributed in to an individual for a uh, for a certain thing and for a time period so i would say all healing comes from rema but some of the rema is released through uh, a meditation or a work of the logos when it speaks about entering the rest in Hebrews chapter 12, it speaks about the word of God is quick and powerful, but that word is Logos. When it speaks about faith being exercised in Romans chapter 10 verse 17, it speaks about a rhema that has been released to a specific individual for a specific time for a specific purpose. So, we can say that all the time is from Rema, but some of the Rema continue to remain linked to the Logos as a whole. Well, praise the Lord. Any final words from anyone? And Colin, any final words? Um. Uh, no, Pastor. Nothing at the moment. Okay. Praise the Lord. And I believe the works of God are about to be demonstrated in our midst. And we give thanks that all these topics are released by the Holy Spirit, uh, synchronizing with what God is about to manifest in our midst. And all we can do is enter into His rest, keep worshipping Him, being in Him, and being a part of His presence and His consciousness and then allowing him to do the works that he has predestined for us to fulfill. Amen. Amen. Father, we give thanks to you. As week by week we meet, we build upon your word, we worship you, we become one together in this worship, in this meeting. We thank you, Father, that you're transforming us. And it is the work and purpose of the Holy Spirit to transform us until we become the living temple of the living God. We thank you, Father, there are certain prophecies that must take place upon this earth. And we thank you that in that prophecy, we have the good part. The part that declares who we are in Christ and all that we will do in you as being part of the glorious church. Let it be unto us according to your word. Help us to bring glory to your name and to establish your word 
that you have given to us and all your promises. Seal these into each one of our hearts here who gather together in your name. Cause an impartation of your will, of your desire, of your love in our hearts so that in the many, many days to come, we fulfill your perfect will and we see and behold the glory of God. We give you all the glory, all the praise and all the worship to you, Father, in Jesus' name. And bless all your people, all of us here gathered together in your name. Cause us all to live, experience a true and living experience with you that our love for you may grow greater than any other generation, that we may demonstrate all of the loveliness of Christ in our generation. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name.